Hello friends! I thought that today we would get creative and uh, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time you've probably seen my main workhorse pincushion. Originally this was a salt shaker. Uh, I have its mate right here and so I thought today I would show you how to make a pincushion out of a salt shaker. Also another of my favorites out of an old egg cup. We're basically repurposing kind of random things into pincushions. So what I have to show you today is a fairly, I don't know, kind of boring salt shaker, a more whimsical salt shaker, and an antique egg cup. If you want to repurpose a salt shaker, you only need to make sure that it has an opening and that you can get to I don't think you're going to be able to see through there, but that you can get to the holes with a very long needle. So you want to be able to have line of sight to the holes in the top of the salt shaker. Once we're done, kind of a little fun bonus of these guys is that you have a secret compartment that you can put stuff in. So that's kind of fun too. Let's start with the egg cup first. I think that'll be the easiest and the most straightforward. For this one, all you will need is some stuffing, your egg cup, and a circle of velvet or fabric of some kind. Cotton, velvet, maybe something like twill or denim would probably even work. I wouldn't do anything with a shine on it, like a satin, because if you have a pin with any kind of barb on the end or any kind of like a little little mashed hook on the end it'll make little runs and tears in the fabric and it won't last very long so velvet is my fabric of choice for pin cushions you can also use a cotton or a twill or a denim something like that I have a circle of velvet here that is about twice the width of the egg cup so we're just gonna take the velvet and do a simple running stitch all along the circle. All right, so I've just made a, a running stitch going all around the length of the circle. I'm gonna pull it in a little bit so that it turns into a little kind of bag. And then take our stuffing. And just fill it up. You do want it fairly tight. But be careful not to make it so thick that it won't actually fit into your cup. That's pretty good, so I don't think we'll need that much. All right. So now that you have your little pillow made, just kind of make sure it's all nice and even inside and just pop it in. Now, I'm comfortable with the velvet holding it in place, if you think that it's just gonna pop out and it's kind of a problem, you can always put a little bit of hot glue or a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. Just be careful if you're gonna use something permanent that you don't wanna destroy your little cup unless you're absolutely sure that you want this item's life to be a pincushion from here on out. So then at this point, you just kind of pop it in there and push it in evenly and uniformly and it's in there and I find You're not going to pull the cushion out just with the friction of a pin. So there you have it. That one's done. Okay, so next we'll do one that's a little bit more complicated. So for this one, you're going to need your base. I'm using a salt shaker again for this one. 
you're going to need a doll maker's needle or at least one that's long enough to get from the opening in the bottom to the holes in the top. You're going to need stuffing again. You'll need a base of cardboard as big as you want the top of the mushroom to be. A little bit of padding and another circle. So these will be layered like this. You're going to have whatever fabric you want for the underside some batting just to give it a little bit of thickness at the bottom and a piece of cardboard underneath to give it some shape. You're also going to need another piece of velvet or whatever it is you're going to use for over the top. So I have my stuffing, my base, my top, my doll maker's needle, and my salt shaker. So the basic idea is to have a salt shaker, have a round harder base under here, and then a soft pillow to sit on top of it. With this again, we're going to have a running stitch go around the whole outside. Now into this, remember this is not going to be the top, this is going to be the underside. So we're going to put that A little batting and our base. Now let's see if we can tighten this up a little bit so it just pulls in around the outside. Okay now what I like to do is go across just kind of make sure that it's all being held in or you're not going to slip out. This will be sewn better when we sew when we sew the top to the base. Then you'll have much more secure stitches that will run all the way to the outside. But for now, this will keep it tight until we get to that point. Okay, so here's the underside of our little mushroom. Before we put the top on, we have to attach this to our or to our salt shaker. So you're gonna want to open it up. Now, because these stitches will be hidden inside the pincushion, I like to use a heavy duty thread, like a buttonhole thread or an upholstery thread, something that can stand up to it because this is all that's gonna be holding it together. All right, so now we're gonna mark on here where our three dots are. So coming through the salt shaker, we're just gonna poke a hole where each dot wants to be. Make sure it's nice and centered. Hang on, poke, poke, and poke. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but we'll have three dots of where we're gonna be sewing this into. So once you have your giant needle threaded with some good heavy thread, stick it through the base and up Now I knot it by going through the knot. Okay, make sure that's still kind of where you want it on there. Pull it up through one hole. Pull it down through the next hole. You can see I'm just going through the holes of the salt shaker and then out the bottom, which is why you need that really long needle. So at this point, we're just gonna keep going back and forth. We're gonna be tacking the base of the cap through the holes where the salt and pepper would come out and out the base of the salt shaker. All right, once you feel like that's on there secure enough, Go ahead and tie off your thread however you like to tie it off. And there we have our base. So now you have the base of the cap of the mushroom nicely fixed onto the stalk of the mushroom or the salt shaker. So now we're gonna make our little pillow for the top. Okay, so kids take precedence, but 
I'm back. It's the next day and let's pick up where we left off. We've got our mushroom stem attached to the base of the cap through the hole in the bottom. And now we're going to put the top on. Same thing. Now we're going to make the kind of pillowy cushiony part. We want to make a running stitch around the outside, just like we did with the other ones. And then we'll attach it onto our base. Alright, so then we pull the thread so that it puckers up and we've got our little bowl to put the stuffing in. And you can take this time to kind of even out the gathers, make sure that the stuffing is all nice and even in there. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that seems fairly even. What you don't want is to have like a huge like wad of stuffing here and then not much over here or something like that. So try and kind of get in there and poke it around and even it out so that it feels nice and even all over the whole thing. Okay, now we're just going to attach it to our base. I'm going to scoop up a little of the cap and just the outside. Remember, you're, you've got cardboard in there, so it's going to be hard on the needle if you try and go through the cardboard. But just pick up the gathers and a little bit of the base fabric. All right, so we made it back to the beginning again. Just tie it off. I don't know, I've always been a knot person, but recently I've been seeing the value of uh, just doing three or four tiny stitches and having that be good. Uh, interested how many how many of you guys are are not people versus just a few stitches people to tie things off okay however you tie it off just make sure to bury the end of the thread in there all right and again kind of mash it around make sure that you've got it where you want it And there's a nice little mushroom pincushion. Now, because this pincushion has like a kind of a dome on the top, there's a little wiggle room you can see. So there's a couple things you can do. One is just leave it. I mean, mine has that and it's perfectly flat across the top. It's just because the holes are really big that we're attaching it to. So unless you're going to use something like um, hot glue or something, it's never going to be you know, 100% wiggle free. You could get a piece of cording and kind of wrap it around and make it a little tighter in there. That would also be decorative. Any kind of trim or anything like that, or you can just leave it like that. Most of the time you're gonna be looking down at a pincushion anyway. So there is the next one. On to our last one. This one's gonna be our little rabbit. So I have my little rabbit salt shaker here. I have kind of the same idea as the mushroom, only much smaller. I have the um, under the base fabric and a little piece of cardboard for the base. I have the top to make our little pillow. I have some lace to go around the outside. This is just a piece of, uh, of old tatting that I've had around for a long time and a little bit of stuffing for the inside. So we're gonna put this together pretty much like the mushroom. We're gonna have a little base that we're gonna sew through the hole in the bottom into there, and then stuffing, and then the top on it. And then we'll put um, some trim around the outside, and that way he'll look like he's just kind of balancing it there for us, and that'll be fun. 
All right, so step one, again, running stitch around the outside so that we can hold it onto our little cardboard disc. You could probably get away with not doing this part, but uh, it just kind of secures it a little more while you're working. Put your little cardboard disc in. And pull it tight so we have almost like a covered button to start with. So figure out kind of where you want it. You go in through the bottom. Just like when we made the mushroom, we want to sew it down onto the base. Once you've made one set of holes, it's, it's easier because you can kind of find that hole to come back up through your cardboard. And just go around in a circle through the salt holes. Okay, once you feel like he's stable on there, bring your needle back to the top and tie it off. So now he's sitting there, balancing our little pincushion base on the top of his head. So predictably, same drill. We're just going to uh, running stitch around the outside to make a pillow for our stuffing and attach him onto our little base. So this one's going to be quite a bit smaller. So we will not use a whole lot of fluff. Once you get a size that you like, then tie it off. So it stays nice and tight. Do any last minute shaping before we sew it on. Yeah, let's go for it. All right, so same procedure. Pick up a little bit of the top, a little bit of the bottom. Once we get back to the beginning, just tie it off and we'll put the trim on. So there we have our little bunny balancing our little pincushion. I think it'll look better with a little piece of trim, but it might look good just the way it is now. So we'll see how much do we need. Looks like in between these two pieces. Now, when cutting tatting, because tatting is made out of little knots, it is fairly stable, but it's gonna unravel a little bit too. So we're basically, if, I'm a, if I wanna keep this one, this one is gonna be sacrificed and this one will be whole. So now we're gonna attach our little piece of trim around the outside of the pincushion. I'm going to put the join here behind, like kind of under the ears, because I think that's probably the most hidden spot. And I like sewing tatting in through the picos. I think that it holds on to it very well that way. So I've got a little bit of fabric on my needle and then hook it up through the pico. And then back down. So come up where you want the tip to be. 
go through that pico right there. And then tack it down. All right, so I'm going to carry on around the outside. And then we'll be done. Now I finished sewing down the trim, and I've got a little bunny balancing a pincushion on the top of his nose. It's always interesting to make these kinds of videos because you never know what you think or what I think is really endearing and charming and kind of fun to have a little sewing buddy there helping you sew by holding your pins. I think it's endearing and fun. I don't know. Hopefully some of you out there will agree with me. So we have a rabbit, we have a mushroom, and we have an egg cup. Uh, one thing to uh, to note, you don't have to keep the plug in, obviously uh, there's nothing in there unless you like to have secret compartments and things. In which case, yes, you have a secret compartment in the bottom of your pincushion now. Thank you for sewing with me. Thank you for hanging out as I made these three little guys. I had fun. Hopefully it was an inspiration. Maybe it inspired you to kind of look around and go, hmm, could I turn that into a pincushion? And uh, go raid your local thrift stores and things and see what you can find and have some fun with. So thank you for joining me on this video, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Giant needle. A giant needle. Mm-hmm.